Hi gang. Recently I've been getting some emails asking for tips on how to make a lifter uh, from people making science fair projects. And I guess they saw on my website the lifters I'd made many years ago. So I thought I'd make this step-by-step -step video on how to make a very simple lifter. Hope you find it useful. Before I explain how to build this lifter, I just want to go over a few points. There are basically two electrodes. There's this thin wire electrode up here, and then there's this foil, metal foil skirt right here. You want everything to be as light as possible. Um, so for these uh, wooden supports, I'm using balsa wood. It's 1 16th of an inch. I get it from hobby stores. It comes in three foot lengths. It's extremely light. This whole thing only weighs about two grams. Um, the wire is a 30 gauge wire. I buy this roll from an electronics shop. If you, 30 gauge is very, very, very thin. Um, if you don't have 30 gauge wire, if you can't find any, then maybe you can find some stranded wire and um, peel off the insulation carefully and uh, use some of the strands. They look pretty close. In this case, looks pretty close to 30. Might be a little, a little thicker. I won't guarantee this will work, but because uh, I haven't tried it, but it might. The um, top of the skirt right here um, is best if it's rounded. You don't want a sharp edge for the top of the foil skirt. Uh, the bottom can be sharp, that's fine. Um, and the reason is because you have one electrode that's a wire here and you have the foil skirt here, the electric field is going to be between these two. Um, the electric field between the wire and the bottom of the skirt is going to be far less than between the top. So you want that to be rounded, if at all possible. Another thing, the uh, wire should be bare wire. No insulation on it at all, so bare wire. Okay, first of all, for the foil skirt, I'm using just normal kitchen aluminum foil. I'm using the lightweight stuff. I know there's heavy-duty aluminum foil, but you want this thing to be as light as possible. Uh, now, the dimensions are not that important, um, so I'm just going to rough something out here. Uh, for the height of it, um, this is the horizontal piece of wood that's going to be uh, for the horizontal support. I'm going to have to fold the top of the, of the skirt over it, so I just want to make sure that I can do that easily enough, and I figure about half an inch should be good. So as you see, the dimensions are rough. Next, uh, how wide should I make it? Well, this aluminum foil is 12 inches, so I'm going to cut a 12 inch piece. And um, I'm going to need some over on the end to fold over. So if I do it 3 and 7 eighths, 3 and 7 eighths, 3 and 7 eighths, and that would leave me 3 eighths on the end right here for the fold, which is probably good enough. So um, that's it. So one and a half by 12. Now for the legs. For the legs, I'm going to want them to uh, descend down below the skirt somewhat. I don't know, about an inch or so, just to keep them off the table surface. And also because the table might be electrostatically charged. So we want to keep them away from that. So about an inch should be fine. And then want it to go up some amount as well so that I can have an adjustable height for the top wire, for the top electrode. So, um, looks like around oh, five and a half inches would be good for the legs. And I'll just need three of those. Okay, now for the horizontal members, the uh, structural supports. Uh, each of these is three and seven eighths. And uh, this is one sixteenth, so each leg is one sixteenth. So that leaves that space in between. But um, I really want about an eighth of an inch uh, where each leg is because this whole thing is going to fold over. So that really means instead of three and seven eighths, I want to make the piece that fits in between here three and six eighths. So I need three of those. Okay, this is the glue I'm going to use. It's Cyano Accurate glue. Uh, it's just one I found at the local hobby store. It's basically the same stuff as crazy glue and works great from metal to wood to plastic and is a heck of a lot cheaper, only five bucks for this, whereas crazy glue for the same volume would cost you 50 bucks maybe. Okay, before gluing in the horizontal pieces, I'm going to make a mark here, a line, to uh, guide where I'm going to put them. I'm going to put it about three-eighths of an inch down. And now to glue the horizontal pieces in place, just gonna use a little bit of glue. Now what I've done is I've left about an eighth of an inch over here because I have put the vertical support as well. And I'm going to leave an eighth of an inch between each next one as well. Uh, 
And now to fold over the top piece and glue it into place. Now for the vertical legs, I've got a mark, one inch mark on each leg. And now to glue the legs in place. I use the one inch mark as a guide. I put the one inch mark at the bottom of the skirt, the sharp edge. Remember I left one eighth of an inch at the end here. Just press that down and glue this into place. Okay, then the next one here, I remember I left about an eighth of an inch in between here for it. So that one can go in there. Okay, now for the end where I fold it over, I'm going to put a one fold first because I want the sharp edge to be on the very inside, hidden away. So a small little fold there first to start. Even on the corner, just to get as many sharp edges as much on the inside as possible. And that still leaves me a little bit for overlap. Okay, overlap with that, and this will then fold over like that. So I'll put some glue. Now this balsa wood is extremely delicate, so be careful. Now the way I'm going to put the wire on, first of all I'm going to leave about a foot and a half on extra. See why later. And I'm just going to loop it around the leg. The reason for that is I want the height to be adjustable. It's an easy way of doing it. Now it doesn't have to be too straight in between the legs. Reasonably straight. And You have to put one more piece of wire, and that's for the wire going from the aluminum foil to the power supply. Or not really all the way to the power supply, but to a uh, support. And uh, to do that, I, I want to, well, I guess it's a sharp edge to the bottom of the skirt anyway, so it doesn't matter too much if the sharp edge is exposed, if the end of the wire is exposed. I'm going to tape it to the very bottom kind of an L shape, and I'll tape it to the very bottom. Now the side you want to tape it to is the side opposite the side where the wire is going to the to top wire here. So it's this face here. And tape it to the bottom of it. Bottom of it. And I'm just going to use some aluminum tape. I just want some very lightweight tape. Aluminum tape is fine. I mean, scotch tape is probably fine too, something like that. Electrical tape, black electrical tape is probably getting a little bit heavy, but probably get away with it, maybe. And there we go. A completed lifter. So here's the finished lifter in its setup. Right down there. I've tied uh, strings to the legs. There's one string, another string, or rather threads actually, and another thread tied to the other leg. That's that when the lifter flies, it uh, won't fly off, plus its uh, flying behavior is very erratic. So this smooths it out basically. Um, the skirt right here I've connected to ground. That's the wire I taped on. It's simply going to a wire right here and that wire is just connected to my power supply ground right here. It's going under the table there. And uh, this is the high voltage wire so the top wire here, the top electrode, the wire electrode is going to high voltage, in my case positive, it doesn't matter, it could be negative, it'll still work. And um, I've just connected it to these series resistors here. I don't need these, these are to protect the power supply. My power supply usually handles sparking. 
but it could be that an arc or spark will damage your power supply. This is to, meant to prevent it. This is 240 kilo ohms, uh, 10 watts. Uh, anything above uh, around 250 kilo ohms and 2 watts should do just fine. I, I have two 120 kilo ohm resistors in series here. And that goes to the high voltage side of my power supply, which is a home made power supply that I've done. Um, let's see, I guess that's about it. I've uh, strung it up here so that... Now these are uh, glass right here, good insulators. You want to have insulators. Um, you don't want anything that can conduct electricity. And that's why I use these glass towers. And uh, these sharp points right here would all be very bad if this was like wood or something something conductive. Um, plastic may well, the plastic's okay too. Um, as long as it's an insulator, then I could have sharp points right here because there's not going to be a strong electric field between the glass and the sharp points. This wire, however, uh, it's connected to ground, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, everything else is grounded anyway, so it can come in contact with them. But this wire over here, the high voltage wires, high voltage with respect to ground. So you want to keep it only in contact with insulators. And um, let's see, one other thing right here is this. This is called a discharge stick. And it's just a wire on the long end of a stick. And the other end of this wire is going to earth ground. That way when I'm finished with my power supply, I can just touch the high voltage parts here, which would be these balls and this ball right here. And um, that will discharge the power supply after I've turned it off. I'll demonstrate that. All right, so I turn my power supply. I use a Variac, and I gradually turn it up. That hissing you hear is all the air ionizing. And there we go, lift off. You can see it's dancing around. It's very erratic, but the threads hold it out to their maximum. That's what balances it. And I can smell the ozone right now. So lots of ionized air coming out of that. Okay, I'm going to turn it off, turn it down, off, and here's the discharging I was talking about. The power supply, and that's basically a capacitor there, and the power supply also has charged parts, and I want to discharge it. So I take the grounded wire of my discharge stick, and I touch the balls, and I just hold it there for a few seconds. Just make sure everything's discharged. And uh, if you don't have balls like that to touch, then you can always just touch the skirt of the uh, lifter and the wire of the lifter, just to make sure that there's no high voltage left. At that point, you're safe. And that, that, that's it. That's the lifter. So I hope you enjoyed that. hope you find that useful. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure and check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos. That includes more science and tech videos, as well as many on renewable energy. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave questions or comments below. See you in a bit.